Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Tonight is D- Dynamite, and we have got seven scheduled segments. Brian Danielson, Sammy Guevara, Best of Three Falls. Eddie Kingston versus Ethan Page in the AW World Title Eliminator Tournament. John Moxley promo, Britt Baker and Soraya face-to-face. Jamie Hayter versus Sky Blue, acclaimed in FTR versus Swerve in Our Glory in the Guns. And we will hear from MJF. So that's seven segments. There's eight segments on the show. They could always announce something here at any time, but uh, I'm thinking something big's happening tonight. I don't know, but uh, that's what I'm thinking. You've and got hey, a pretty good track record recently. There here. were three big things that happened last week, all yeah. entirely different. But all big. So I think something's happening tonight involving the uh, Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. I just have that feeling. So Down in your gut? Yes. My gut. After spending eight months in jail on attempted murder charges, former UFC heavyweight champion, former WWE wrestler Cain Velasquez, was released on $1 million bail on Tuesday. Decision came... After 13 hours of a pre-trial hearing that stretched over two days, in February, Velasquez was charged by Santa Clara County Police with allegedly chasing down Harry Galarte in his truck and shooting at him, striking Galarte's stepfather, who was also in the vehicle. Velasquez allegedly followed Galarte on what was called a, quote, 11-mile high-speed chase, driving into Galarte's vehicle before firing into it. The incident was sparked by Galarte being charged with sexual assault, of a young relative of Velasquez. Velasquez later claimed in a civil suit that his own four-year-old son was also sexually assaulted. The 40-year-old pleaded not guilty in August, was denied bail four times by a different judge in fear that he would retaliate against Galarte. As he awaits a trial date, he will have to wear a GPS tracker, cannot come within 300 yards of the alleged victim in the vehicle, must comply with specific conditions like having no weapons, undergoing counseling, search and seizure conditions, and more. One million dollar bail. But at the end of the day, as of right now, he's out of jail. So that is the latest on Kane Velasquez. That's going to be a very high-profile trial when that actually occurs as a result of what happened. So, there you go. Our truth confirmed he suffered a torn quad. In a video he posted to his social media accounts on Tuesday, he announced he was about to undergo surgery after tearing his quad while facing Grayson Waller on NXT. Thanked everybody for their support. Promise he will be back before they know it. Injury happened when the 50-year-old Truth went for a flip dive against Waller. He didn't clear the top rope. It says here he didn't clear the top rope and landed badly on his left leg. I bet you any amount of money. That's that's not how he got hurt. He got hurt taken off. He got hurt when he ran and planted. And you could see that he had no spring because he barely got over the ropes. And, I mean, he didn't land, like, on his leg. Like, he landed on his back and grabbed his leg. So I'll bet you anything it was planting his foot when he went to do that flip dive because, you know, in all sorts of sports, you plant your foot the wrong way and it's gone. And uh, that's what happened. So tore his quad probably nine months to a year, especially at 50 years old. And I guess we'll see how much wrestling he does when he comes back. Yeah, well, he's the kind of personality, though, that, you know, you don't necessarily have to see our truth wrestle when he comes back. Just the fact that he can come out there and just pop up in a segment or something like that. He carries a lot of value, and he's, you know, he's been through a lot of generations now. You know, a lot of people weren't born when Kate Quick debuted alongside Road Dog on WWF Raw way back when. I think they hadn't gotten the F out quite yet when he actually debuted up there. So he has been around for a long time. He can provide a lot. He's seen a lot. And he knows that company inside and out. So his presence somewhere in that company in the future, I think, could be a benefit. Absolutely. Uh, Whether it's inside the ring or not. You know, I got to say, can't believe I'm saying this, but I am. This Raw is too long. It's three hours. But it's not getting shorter. No. So we got to have something to fill some of this time. All right. Now, 
I hated the 24-7 title. And I hated it because they just... These idiots would run in in the middle of a match. It it just distracted from the match. It didn't make the segment better. It only made the segment worse. It's stupid. But you know what? If our truth hobbled out on a Raw last week on crutches, and granted they're in a different city, but it's wrestling, and uh, and he he's hobbling around on his crutches after surgery, and he looks down and he sees that twenty four seven title, and he claims it. Because he is the perennial 24-7 champion. And we had a year. And let me let me make this clear. I don't want any of this crap coming out in the middle of matches or, you know, Seth Rollins is having some match and these idiots run out chasing somebody. I don't want any of that. But if you had one segment every week where because Truth is maybe he's in a wheelchair, maybe he's on crutches, he's like totally handicapped at the time. And every week, Tazawa, for example, someone they're doing nothing with, tries to steal that title from him, and they get foiled. It, it could be like one minute. Just do a one-minute short film, some stupid wacky thing, and uh, and that's it. I'd be fine with that. I mean, somebody's got to have s- enough intelligence to come up with something goofy. You could you don't even do it every week. Once a month, here's Truth rolling his way through Central Park. Here comes Tazawa. Goes for the Lariat. Uh, and Truth kind of goes back. You know how they do the wheelie? Because Tozawa misses. He falls into a, a, a fountain. we we'll go to the next segment. Once a month. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, oh, Brian. if you had somebody that understood comedy that could make these funny, I'm fine with this. I think it'd be a good idea. Get Truth on TV. Let him, yeah, silent film. Uh, film Look, in black and I white. I know Vince isn't there anymore, okay? And I also know that the classics never die. The, all those things you brought up, everything that you mentioned can be absolutely hilariously funny. It can be great slapstick. It can be why we love pro wrestling. But you also then have to take into account the people that are doing it, in charge of it. Do they have the self-control to actually limit it to only one minute a show. Do they have Bro, that's the not my issue. I'm coming up with an idea. If they want to screw it up, that's on them. I'm your making this idea, easy for you. Your idea, it, look, I'm not bashing your idea. It's a very simple idea. It's like a lot of ideas that people have when it comes to WWE and some of the things that they could do and do incredibly well if they could just suckle themselves a little bit. And I know the old man is gone, but we have seen some times here, even recently, Dexter Loomis and some other things where... I yeah, don't know. That sucks. The apple doesn't fall that far from the yeah, tree. Listen, you know what I'm saying? Listen. This person here says, does Brian miss Vince philosophy and ideas? No, let me tell you, let me explain this to y'all. This Raw show, this Raw show is better now than it was with Vince. But sometimes it can be a little bit boring. Now, that doesn't mean I want you to bring back every stupid thing that Vince McMahon did. But you know what? You know what? You know what's ironic? What's that? Vince McMahon in the 90s hired this guy named Vince Russo, who was a creative guy, and he had a bunch of stupid ideas. But you know what he had? What he have? had Vince there to edit his stupid ideas. And so Vince ended up, you know, he had some stuff on there that was interesting, and and he made it better. And then, of course, you know, Russo went to WCW, and there was no Vince, and everything was just stupid, okay? So the point is, Vince Russo was fine. He had an editor, and the editor was Vince. So the irony is that at the end of Vince's run in WWE in the uh, 2020s, he became Vince Russo, and he didn't have his old self to edit himself. That's the problem. I don't want a three-hour boring show. I want something a little bit exciting. I want something a little bit wacky. I don't want something super wacky. Come up with one of Vince's stupid ideas like this 24-7 garbage and have somebody with a brain make it better. So you have something, but not something over-the-top stupid. Is this too much to ask? I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, 
And uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That's definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, and all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. <laughs> this is the weird thing he says. Yeah. It is. Well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah. That's weird. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.